Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 3, Episode 5 of The Umbrella Academy. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, let's start off with Klaus's situation. At first, I was like, all right. I was like, I completely forgot. Klaus did kind of die back in season one because he overdosed, didn't he? Wasn't that how that, the whole thing went down? If I remember correctly, I kind of remember he went into the afterlife. He met his dad and that whole spiel. About, I completely forgot about that until he was back there again. And saw the little girl. He's like, I'm ignoring your, forget about the riddles and stuff. Just point me in the direction I'm supposed to go. I'm not trying to deal with everything again. She points him in the direction he goes. And eventually he runs into, well, he actually starts reliving certain depths he had throughout his life. And then we quickly find out Klaus, every time he thought he had a near-death experience, he had actually died. And then immediately, it wasn't until his mom was like, oh, you've died 56 times. I stood up. I was like, fuck you, the Umbrella Academy. Uh, because uh, in, a, in a loving way, like, oh, my God, I can't believe it took me this long to realize this. Like, while we were having this conversation about, like, him... Um, you know, being able to come back because if you're unaware, Robert uh, Sheehan, the actor who plays Klaus, was in another show called Misfits where, spoilers, the character he played, Nathan, had, because people in that show have superpowers, Nathan's superpower was he was immortal. He died, took a little while, but he'd eventually come back to life. I was like, shut up! Is that actually Klaus's, a part of Klaus's ability? I mean, which, it almost makes sense. I mean, you kind of, like, kind of have control over the dead. I mean, Granted, Klaus has never really pushed his powers as far as they could go. Because uh, even even during that thing when he met his dad, like his dad was like, you don't even know what you're fully capable of. But to me, I was just like, is that... I mean, I need, I'm curious to look into that, whether or not that's something from the comics. Because if it's not, they, it just the, the, that, that happened to just fit too perfectly. Just once again, he played a character who kind of was immortal. Uh, I, just, I thought that was so funny and so interesting if that's the case. I mean... Obviously, Klaus is a more fucked up, like, obviously, drug and, like, trying to, like, substance abuse user compared to, like, Nathan. Nathan was just an asshole. But regardless, uh, I just thought that was so fascinating. It was really sweet that he got to meet his mom, but he's like, wait, how do you know you're my mom even though you died before I was born? It's like, well, yeah, how did you come back to life 56 times? So, either this is supposed to be, like, his mom. Well, I guess, like, she's the mom, either supposed to be the mom from the original timeline, or she is his mom, but she's she says, she, like, we get all the channels here, so I was watching you. Because she's like, yeah, how do you think you came back 56 times? And he's like, well, I thought it was like a cartoon character. You drop a hammer on my head, I see some birdies, and then I'm fine. She's like, what's a cartoon? He's like, oh my god, you're Amish. I'm so sorry. She's like, no, I'm just screwing with you. I'm like, I, that, that back and forth, I'm like, that's Klaus's mom. Like, he definitely gets her, like... He has his issues, but he definitely has his mom's personality. I thought that was so sweet. I thought that was so interesting. I love that. I thought that was just kind of a nice touch. Um, it's also kind of sad. Well, we don't know if the others will ever get a chance. Um, whether or not they'll ever get the chance to ever meet their moms. But Kyle's getting that chance this time. And I love her saying, like... Well, because she's at peace here, so he doesn't have to worry about her. But he's like, no, 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 no. Like, peace is so overrated. And she's like, yeah, but chaos is exhausting. He's like, yeah, but I'm a professional at it. But for her, it's like, you're trying to find purpose. What's It's right there in front of you. And then, like, the uh, the food they're eating turns into, like, the white, the, the buffalo that he kept seeing. Once again, buffalo symbolism all over the place. It was all up in American gods. It was... Um, pretty significant well it's it's bison and not buffalo but still eh, uh in um outer range and now this so there's some significance there that Klaus isn't quite piecing together but I don't know whether she was kind of referencing like oh your purpose is your family your family's right in front of you focus on that I don't know whether that was what she was kind of implying or whether she was implying like there's this mystery that you kind of have the pieces to the puzzle they're right in front of you you just haven't realized it so all the while that's happening, the families are the families getting together. Well, after Harlan and um, Victor had their show out and showdown, so it does seem like my thought process was correct on how the whole how the whole Harlan thing worked. Harlan and Victor were connected, oh, still are, and so when his mom died, Harlan tried to reach out to find Victor because Sissy kept saying that oh, Victor's going to come back. And it's like, yeah, life was always hard. He always knew life was going to be hard, but he didn't know it was going to be like this. So he wanted to, um, he held out hope that Victor would come back, but Victor never did. 
And when his mom died, he finally tried to reach out to find, um, find and connect to Victor, which he did, but obviously Victor and all of his siblings were still, like, in their, um, mom, so he tried, but he kind of took on all that pain when he tried to connect to them and ended up killing all of them. And as, uh, Victor says, it's like, right, kill, we, once again, I knew there was a bigger number. He's like, you murdered 27 people. So it's like, right, all six of their moms plus um, the other moms that could have given birth as well because he was taking in all their pain as well and he just kind of like pushed back and pushed too hard and ended up like massively killing everyone all at once. He's like, I didn't mean to. He's like, I never would have gone through life hurting when that was never me. That that's not me at all. That never, I never thought that would be me. And Victor's like, no, it's not you. It's me. He's like, this is kind of my territory. I've constantly hurt people. And I was like, to me, that broke my heart because I'm like, that's the tragedy of this character. Without like, every time Victor turns around, it's like his powers are being used to hurt somebody. Whether it's once again causing the apocalypse in season one, causing the apocalypse in season two, and it's like you kind of brought about the. the the not the biggest of big all apocalypse because at least the first two apocalypses would have led to the destruction of the world. Now you are you've kind of had a hand in the biggest apocalypse of all, the collapse of the entire universe on itself. So it's like yeah, but um, it's just it's sad that maybe if Reginald had handled things better, if he hadn't tried to keep Victor on, you know, sedated, and then Victor would have been able to get control of his powers at a younger age, because, once again, Victor is the strongest amongst them, so maybe things could have played out differently, Victor could have had a different life, um, and that's, I just think that's such, that, that character is so damn tragic, because you almost get that feeling like, are we gonna, is the end result gonna be like, Victor's going to go have to go back to being who Victor was in season one in regards of you're going to have to be sedated, forget that you have any powers. Like, will Allison have to, like, like rumor you again so just so you can go back to being a normal person thinking you have no powers, thinking you're not special? But it's also like, right, Victor's found themselves and taking away their powers might be a solution, but it'd be taking Victor back to being who they, like, not being themselves anymore, not feeling right, not feeling complete. That that that'd be the like big rub of it all, and it's like right. Would any of them want their powers or abilities taken from them? So would they be okay doing that to their um to their brother? You know, so I I don't, I don't know how you handle that. The other option is not unless you kill Victor, with because and I don't know if that's either one of those solutions might be the sad reality of that's the only way to stop things from spiraling out anymore. Just because the crux of all the issues tend to revolve around. Victor's powers, truth be told, this is, still goes back to their dad. It's kind of his fault with the way he's handled things. I mean, he had his reasons for doing all that he's done, but he's kind of brought about this time and time again. At the heart of it, all the apocalypses are basically his fault, so. Harlan wants to say, like, right, we need to go tell your family everything, but, it, like, Victor's like, no, 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 with everything going on right now, we probably need to ease them into the notion that we, that you accidentally murdered all of our mothers. It's like, we probably need to take that slow. So, he runs into Luther, which Luther sees the, the scar on, um, Victor's face being like, oh, Harlan did that to you, which is later on, he's kind of comparing Harlan to Leonard. Once again, I couldn't, I, once again, it's been a while since I've seen season one. I've not seen season one since I rewatched it for, uh, uh, to watch season two when it originally came out. So I did not, rem I could not remember Leonard's name for the life of me. So, for, but in this episode, they reference Leonard and it's like, yo, don't compare Harlan to Leonard. Leonard was a sociopath all in his own right, whereas Harlan is a byproduct of the choices that, Victor made. It's like, I saved his life and I set so much in motion. So that is on me. Uh, obviously, we see Diego and Allison who are pretty banged up themselves. And Diego's excited. But it's like, yo, you should have seen Allison out there. I've never seen her that brutal before. And which should have been the key sign of like, yeah, your solution, the way we're dealing with things, 
his way of dealing with things was just more frustration against their dad, and he created a hero complex around it just because his dad kind of like birthed that in him as well. But Allison is dealing with a lot of unresolved issues that she's burying, and she just she's not handling things the right way. She's literally seconds away from imploding, and I mean, I guess you could say she imploded this episode too, but still. Um, Diego went to check on Stan, who was like, yo, this is, uh, this is, uh, Klaus, and it's like, what happened? This is my brother, and then he looks at the chemicals that, because Stan was like, yeah, you taught me to, re you know, take responsibility for my own actions, so thanks, Dad. He was like, you were going to dissolve my brother's body? He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't want you to hate me, because then I would have went to jail, and then I would have had to join a gang for protection, and then I would have ended up in a hole. I'm like, I love that that kid went that hard in the pain about, like, what his future held for him. But Diego's like, I don't hate you. It's like, right. He's like, it's just for him. It's like, Klaus nearly died so many times. I'm just surprised. Like, he's just, he just assumed that Klaus was invulnerable. So, wrapped him up in a rug. Let's go. And I love that. What's the guy's name, Chet, who runs the hotel? Like, he stops and sees them. And it's like, uh, Diego's like, oh, we're playing a game. It's like, what game? Uh, what was it? Uh, wrapped in a carpet or something like that? And the guy's like, well, I hope you win. And he walks away. And he's like, Diego's like, uh, Klaus was right. I do love this place. He's like, yeah. The guy saw it. He knew something was funky. He's like, I ain't going to ask no questions. With everything that's going on in a hotel, that guy has not asked any questions. I just love him being a background guy. I, I want to say the first thing I, I didn't talk about it, but that actor, like, I want to see, see him in so many different things. I want to say him as Death in Supernatural is probably the first thing I ever saw that actor in. I want to say. Well, I have to specify OG Death. If you've seen Supernatural, you know why I had to, like, specify that. But, um, would he even be old Jay Doth? I don't know I'm thinking, well, the way how death works in that universe. And tangents and all that side. But then Klaus comes back to life in the middle of it. And it's like, cool, um, it's like, yeah, I thought you were dead. He's like, I thought I was dead, too. And he starts laughing. He's like, ha, ha, ha. And he kind of turns into a little bit of crying laughing because he was excited to be back. But, uh, yeah. So... Everyone's gathered, Five's telling them about the Kugel Blitz, and, oh, also, Klaus drops the info, like, oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's in the bottom of the basement, and it's like, wait, what? Why didn't you say anything? Deagle, I told you. It's like, you say stupid shit all the time. Like, how am I supposed to really believe anything that comes out your mouth? So that's that. Allison's dealing with her own thing, because she's like, why doesn't Five just time travel? It's like, well, the last time I time traveled, we all got stuck in time, so do you want to take that chance again? So... It, there's no solution to this. It, there's no time travel because that C, uh, briefcase was the last one. And even then, they had to like they had to rigmarole their way to getting to it. I mean, granted, it was it was kind of a technical two shot. Uh, but if they knew it was only going to be a one shot, they wouldn't have like wasted it on going to the commission. But without the, going to the commission, they would have never met older five. They wouldn't have found out the truth. Which I love that him and Klaus kind of have a heart to heart over drinks. It's kind of like a, um, because Klaus and Lila had that conversation where she was like, because I forgot to talk about it. It was an important conversation last episode, how he was kind of like, nah, I'm done with all this apocalypse stuff. She's like, no, you live for it. You're, you're, you're all about this. And it's like, oh, wow, you're so super about this that an older, at some point in time, you go off and start the commission in the first place. You thought you were just all this complaining you did about the commission. You are a corporate man. Um, cause you went off and started this whole thing to begin with, so. Which Five's trying to come to terms with that. And even he, uh, you know, uh, came face to face with his mortality cause he's like, right, I've, I've beaten time and apocalypses so many times. It was like, just seeing myself die made me go like, huh, I, I thought I would have found a way to out, like, outmaneuver death, but even a time traveler like me, even with my powers, I still, the uh, the Reaper came for me regardless. So um, that is kind of interesting. Which, the last time we see Five in the episode, which is actually the end of the episode, he went to the biker gang that Klaus pointed out, and it turns out that's where Pogo works. Now, whether he's just a tattoo artist, which I think speaks volumes that who's the one that gave him the tattoo but Pogo, once again, it just depends on how... Who exactly is that five? Once again, is that a five from the original timeline that started the commission? And because that place protects him from paradoxes, he wasn't affected by the uh, grandpa paradox. And he just kind of was locked in there forever, you know, because I guess once again, I guess even that will get destroyed in the long run. I don't think that's going to be the once 
one place in all of existence in the entire universe that will be okay. Uh, I think it, like everything's going to get consumed sooner or later. Uh, but or was it Pogo that gave him the tattoo? So we'll see for one whether or not he loses an arm or whether he gets the tattoo and run. So because. Kasa's advice was like, yeah, stay away from anything sharp that can lop off your arm and just make sure you don't get this tattoo and don't go near these guys. And he ends up having to go near them because they potentially have some answers to figuring this whole thing out. So does beg the question, how did that happen? Well, we know that Reginald did say at the end, like his monkey got away. Pogo got away and I guess Pogo never came back. Or maybe Pogo did and maybe he didn't want to be around Reginald the way he was running the Sparrow Academy. Because Pogo kind of acted as a little bit of Reginald's... Well, because also like... The Umbrella Academy going back in time changed how things between him and Grace played out. So maybe that... Influ I'm sure that was actually a big influence on why he turned out the way he did. Because... Uh, Grace ended up leaving him. Maybe she would have eventually died, or maybe she still did leave him, but maybe the circumstances were different, and just maybe he grew... I mean, he did... I mean, the scene afterwards, well, it was a JFK thing, so he immediately ended up killing um, that whole group afterwards, but he was probably dealing with the JFK thing, the whole him and Grace thing, so he was trying to act all calm and composed, but maybe that affected him a lot more, and that's why he treats the... Uh, he went so hard in the paint when it came to... You know, once again... He treated the Umbrella Academy pretty bad, but it seems like the Sparrow Academy probably got it rougher until they kind of finally snapped and started drugging him in the process. Either way, we'll have to wait and see where things kind of go on that front. Uh, what took me by surprise was the Allison situation. When um, her uh, she's drinking and she's just not doing good, and even Luther can tell she's not doing good. So he ends up talking to her like, right, we'll, we'll figure this all out. It's like, yeah, but even if we do, what new timeline is going to be born? It's going to be something worse. Because if there's a new timeline born, it will most likely, we're just going to end up in one worse than this one. If anything, it'll probably be a branch, it'll be a modification of this timeline rather than a modification of the original timeline A. So, and Luther's trying to comfort her, and um, she kind of goes in for kissing. and he's like, oh, whoa, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, no, 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 and, and that's the sad thing. At one point in time, before this season, that would have been everything Luther ever wanted. All he ever wanted to do was be with um, Allison, ever since they were kids. He's been madly in love with her, but he's like, yeah, I'm going to go off and meet with Sloane, and she's like... Really? You're gonna go sleep with like that knockoff Amy? It's like, whoa, what? And even he's like, honestly, like, what do you want from me? If Ray and Claire were here, you wouldn't be giving me the time of day. And he was just like, and she was, she kind of went off on him. And he's just like, yeah, I'm leaving. Cause she's like, you're gonna stay. And it was like, and she was like, I heard a rumor you're gonna stay. And I was like, oh. He's like, don't do this, Allison. She's like, I heard a rumor that you want me. I was like, Yo, this is getting into some super uncomfortable territory. And he starts making out with her, but he's so aggressive because, like, uh, you know, which, referencing Mitzvah, there was a Keisha, uh, Keisha uh, a character named Alicia who basically had that power. Anytime she touched you, you basically lost complete control of your senses. All you wanted was her. It's very uh, reminiscent of that. But she kind of stopped him at one point in time. and Because I think even she recognized, like, yeah, I kind of crossed the line there. Not kind of, straight up crossed the line there. And it's just, she wanted to feel good and just to feel like she needed someone to kind of... She's just so spiraling right now. She's angry and she's just heartbroken and hopeless and sad. It's just all the feels. And she just wanted to feel good. But like Luther wasn't supplying that. Because she, because on some part it's like it's jacked up because you know how Luther felt about you. You've always known how Luther's felt about you in some, in some degree. And it kind of used your power to kind of force that. You know, it's kind of jacked up. But for her, it's just like, right, she's tired of losing things, and she wasn't going to let anyone decide, like, what it is she's going to lose. Like, oh, like, she'd almost rather take something rather than lose anymore, it, because she was already kind of losing Luther, who had always kind of been there for her time and time again, so. Uh, at the same time, this is all going down. Um, Victor goes and, uh, well, because Victor initially wanted to find another way around this. Like, right, we could find another solution, but... 
the team convinced Victor, it's that conversation of the one versus the many. You know, it was like, right, uh, you know, even you most recently, like Avengers being like, oh, Cap being like, we don't, we don't compromise, we don't sacrifice any lives, just, you know, it's like, but it's like, yeah, Lila's like, one life for a billion. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it seems like easy math. But that's the sad thing, because, like, for Victor, it's like, right, Harlan's just another victim in this of mine. Like, it's just another byproduct of my power and who I am. I'm, like, I'm what set all this emotion. He shouldn't have to suffer because of my action, my choices. And even Luther being like, well, you always wanted to be a part of the team? That's what this is about, making the hard choices. It's never, and even five references, you know, the kindest cut, you know, doing what is right. Because doing this will be the solution because they have to come together to uh, with the Sparrow Academy to make this right. Because, like, Ben in particular will not bend on this. He's like, we need to kill that old man and then we can work together. If not, he's willing to duke it out with them, which Victor's like, right, we could do that. But Five's like, yeah, and we'll lose some of us in the process. So let's not go down that route. So Victor went to talk to Harlan, but Harlan was like, I can read, I can feel like our connection. You don't give up on me yet. It's like to get you keep maybe you alone couldn't fix it, but maybe us together with their powers combined, maybe they could do something to stop the grandfather apocalypse and fix things. Um, put things kind of back in order. So Victor is trying to leave with Harlan, but then Allison stops him and offers to take Harlan, which I was like, I was kind of worried for a second, but Allison's like, right, you would do the same thing for me. So she's helping out Victor, but I was always like, you don't think she's going to take, uh, well, because we know Luther sh shows up to be with Sloan at the time because it's like, right, we don't know how this is all going to play out. Not unless he decides to go Team Sparrow because it's like, right, you want to do this? I'll help you get Harlan. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I was also, I was worried that Allison was going to do that. But there's also the possibility that the moment, because Allison will be super upset the moment she finds out Harlan's the one that killed their mom because he's the one that set everything in motion and it's like right you're not only our mo moms that's one thing but the main thing is it's because of you my daughter doesn't exist in this continuity this timeline so that's going to be the real like uh straw that broke the camel's back you know I think that's really going to set uh Allison off which you know Hopefully Harlan doesn't mention anything, but he might because he doesn't know if Victor said anything. So we'll, we'll we'll see how that plays out. But the moment Victor like told the others what he you know it's like, and what did Luther say? It's like, oh, good job on ending the world, destroying everything again. It's like that's the problem. I think he's also acting like that because of everything between him and Allison. But it's like, right? It it sucks. Because you went through the trouble of apologizing to Victor back in season two because you helped push everything towards th that conclusion. You didn't help the things. You made things worse. And Victor's trying to find another solution. And even Five's like, yeah, I thought you were smarter than this. It's like, right, in this moment, your siblings aren't by your side. So Victor's going off on his own to find a solution. So then you have Klaus staring at his chest, which you're immediately like, that's probably going to be a nasty situation because now he knows he can't die. Well, he can die. He'll just come back. Granted, we also don't know if you have like a limited amount of lives. Like coming back from the dead's unnatural. You've done it 56 times over the years. Like who knows? Now you're cognizant of you being able to do that. That could start entering that territory of breaking the bound. I, mean, I was like, well, the world's about to end. So you breaking it in cosmic boundaries by constantly coming back to life. I mean, is it any different from everything else that's going on? So... But um, then you have Diego and Lila. It's like, yeah, let's hook back up because, like, right, uh, you proved to be less of a shitty father than I thought you'd be. And it's the end of the world, so. But I love him. Like, no, 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 we don't just get to do that. You got to woo me first. She's like, will you? He's like, yeah, woo me. Give me some flowers or something. And she's like, all right, I'll find someone else to play the role of dad. But he's like, no, I'm daddy. And you're like, okay. Once again, completely oblivious to the fact is when him and Stan pulled out that um, harpoon, turns out there was a secret doorway back there. They're too busy banging it out to notice it, but we see some light. Because this room has some correlation to Reginald, so I'm assuming this has something to do with maybe his world, his species, and um, what he released onto the world to eventually bring forth the Sparrow Academy and the Umbrella Academy, giving special children powers and stuff. So maybe there's some correlation or connection there. 
Um, which that's what I'm assuming his mom was saying, like, oh, what's right in front of you? Because that's literally what he was standing in front of before he ended up getting harpooned through the chest. But I do love that at the end of this, I mean, you know, speaking of the whole stand uh, thing, that him and uh, Diego are in a better place, and even Diego's happy about it. It's, it's kind of a cute moment, like, uh, what was that line Diego said to him? It's like, yeah, plenty of uh, kids will want to have their dead uncle come back to life, and Lila's like, that's pretty random. He's like, kind of almost like, don't step on my floor, I, I got this, you know? Um, that's kind of beside the point is what he was kind of saying, but I, I think it's nice. It'd be interesting to kind of fully see, cause we've seen like him playing the father role, but we haven't really gotten to see Lila be a mom, but I guess that's the closest we've gotten, we've gotten to a full family dynamic, whatever that means with their crazy circumstances, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see, uh, where the next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.